Hello everyone and welcome back to my channel. So in today's video, I'm going to show you how you can build this Python Tkinter GUI project. So in this project, what we're going to have is this image drawing tool. Basically, we're going to be able to import an image and make some edits to it. So let me show you how this would work. If I press on add image, this should open up a file dialog in which I would select an image. So let's say I select this photo of a dog. Now I have the image open. I can draw on the image. I can change the color of my pen. So if I want the pen to be red, I can change the size. So you see now this is a larger pen and this is a smaller one. Then I can clear my drawings. Another thing I can do is I can apply certain filters to my image. So for example, here I can say I want the image to be in black and white. I want the image to blur. I want it to be embossed, sharpened and smoothed so let me just select smooth you see smooth is a bit under the blur so it's similar to the blur but not as intense all right so this is what our tool is supposed to do in this video i will show you how you can build it i will give you the precise instructions and explain every single line of code so that you know what's going on so we will be using python Tkinter, as well as an external library called Pillow. Pillow is usually used for image processing, so these filters that you just saw us use, this is what we will use Pillow for. All right, so without further ado, let's get started. So I'm going to close our tool and head back to VS Code. So here I'm using VS Code. You can use any code editor that you like, or maybe even an IDE, so long as you're comfortable with it and you're able to run Python. Here I have some starter code. So the starter code will be available in a link in the description. This is so that we don't spend too much time on things that aren't as important or as necessary. I will explain all of these lines of code, but I want you to just get started with the starter code and then add some lines to it. So it's available in the description. The full source code as well is also available in the description. All right, so here's my starter code. Let's see what we have. Before I actually get to the code, let me talk a bit about my file directory. Here I have a folder called Tkinter Image Editor. So in this folder, I have two things. I have another folder called Pictures. This is where I have the images of the dog and the bird. Another thing I have is my main.py file. So this is where we're going to be able to write the code. Okay, so now let's get started with the code. Here you can see we have some imports. So I'm not going to go through them line by line, mainly because every time we use one of these specific imports, I'll go back to it and show you where we used it. But to make things simpler, I included it in the starter code just so that you don't have to write it or copy it from the video for a long time. So these are our imports. Now, the next thing we have is the following. We have this root, which is equal to tk.tk. This is what we call a root widget in tkinter. A root widget is basically a container which will contain everything else that you have in your tkinter application. Consider it like a box that will contain all your other widgets, such as your buttons and so on. So for example, if I whip up paint and here, let's say this, will be my root widget. And then everything else will exist here inside of this box, inside the root widget. This is how tkinter works. It functions as a hierarchy. There's a root or a parent widget, and then all the other widgets exist inside of it. All right, now the next thing is the geometry. What this specifies is the size of our window. So in fact, if I run this code, you will see that this is the geometry that I specified. Let me actually close this here. So we said 1000 by 600. This means we have a width of 1000, 1000 pixels, and then a height of 600. So this is how we specify it. I, spe I specified this because this is the size that I want or I like. Depending on your machine or on your screen, you might want a different size. So feel free to go ahead and change this to suit it to your liking. This could be something like 500 by 500, maybe 1000 by 1000, um, 1200 by 800, whatever you like. Feel free to change it, use some trial and error just to figure out the exact size that you want in your case. All right, now the next line is the title. Actually, let me rerun it again. So the title is this part that you see right here. You see in our case, it says image drawing tool. So the title of our window will be image drawing tool and we specified this right here in the code. The next thing is the root.config. So here we have the background. We're specifying background is equal to white. So now 
if I actually go back, let's see here, you can see that the background is actually white. Now the default is sort of a grayish color that Tkinter uses, but we're going to go with white. This is just a stylistic choice. You can choose any color that you want. Now the next thing we have here is the pen color, pen size, file path. For now, I'm going to hold off on explaining these. I just chose to include them in the starter code because they are as kind of the starter for our program. This will help us specify the color, the size of the pen, which we will use to draw on the image. And next, we actually have the file path, which is the path of the image. More on that later. Now, the final line of code we have in our starter code is this here, the root.main loop. Now, in Tkinter, the way the GUI actually works, the way we actually have this screen or this application running, is that we have an infinite event loop. This infinite event loop is run using this root.main loop function. This means there's an infinite loop that will keep on going and keep on running so long as our application is being executed. So now, if I actually close this, what happens is the main loop is terminated. And this is how Tkinter works, essentially. So this, for now, is all you need to know. All right, so now we have our starter code. We've explained every single line. What we want to do is to go ahead and get started. Now, the first thing I'm going to add is a frame. So now I'm going to go back to paint for a bit just to explain exactly what I'm trying to do. So what I want to do is I want to divide my screen into two, such as like this, okay? So now I will have here all my buttons. So here in this area, I will have my buttons, my widgets, different like select menu, um, labels, things like that. And here, what I want to do is I want to have the image. So I want my image to be right here. So to keep everything in one place, all my widgets, all my buttons, I will use something called a frame. A frame in Tkinter is very similar to the root widget, the biggest box that we already talked about but it's actually just a smaller box within the larger box. So this will be something like here. So if we go back to the code, you can see that I'm saying the left frame, and I called it left frame because it's on the left. I say tk.frame, so tk is coming from this line in the imports, from uh, import tkinter as tk. So I say tk.frame root, we'll get back to this in just a second. I specify the width and the height, so the height is 600, but the width is only 200, and the background is also going to be white. Okay, so now I just created this frame. Now, if I actually run the app, you will see nothing is really different. This is because the frame is not something that's visible. I mean, unless I actually go ahead and change the background to something like red, and now I rerun it. Now you can see that my frame is right here. So this is where all my different widgets are going to exist the buttons, the uh, text edit, the select, things like that. So this is where everything is going to exist in this left area and this left frame. So this is how I have divided my screen. Let's talk a bit about the code. So I'll change the background back to white. So talking about the code, you see that I specified the width and the height. This is straightforward as well as the background. Why did I say root here? For every widget in Tkinter, you need to specify the parent. As I said before, this works as a hierarchy, which means there's a parent or a biggest box, as I showed you here in paint, which is the black big box. Then everything else inside it is a child to it. So you have to specify the parent to this child. So when I created this left frame, I specified that the parent is going to be root, meaning frame is going to exist inside root. Now, the next thing we need to do, so in Tkinter, anytime you need to add any widget to your application, you need to do two things. You need to first create it, as you see here. And the second thing is you need to pack, place, or grid. So this means you need to position it in your screen. Here, let's actually bring this back to red and let me show you. So you see, if I run it, you see that this is red right here. However, if I comment this line of code out, and I run it again, as you can see, there is no more red frame. Why is that? This is because your widget does not get placed in the interface unless you actually run the pack function. There are alternatives, pack, place, and grid, but we're not going to talk about them in this video because it's not the purpose of this video. I have a separate video about those, but for now, we're just going to use pack. So let me actually go back. And now here's what we do. We say pack, which means we want to place it on our screen. 
And then I say side equal left, which means I want it to be on the left side of the screen. And I say fill equal Y, which means take up the entire space along the Y axis, which means vertically. Now we're running it. As you can see, we can't really see it because it's white, but now the frame is back here. All right, so we've added the frame. The next thing we're going to add is a button. So now I am going to add the button using these two lines of code. I call it image button, and then it will be a TK dot button. So this is how you create a button in Tkinter. The parent for this is left frame. So notice how before the parent of left frame was actually root. In this case, no, the parent is left underscore frame. Why is that? Because the button itself, it will be inside here. Okay, my bad. So the button, let's say red, it will exist here inside of the frame. So the button will be inside the frame and the frame is inside the root. Again, it's a hierarchy. There are multiple parents and multiple children. So I specify that the parent is the left frame. Now text here tells me how to specify the text on the button. And finally, the background is white. This is straightforward. We know what this is. So now if I comment this line of code out and I run it, as you can see, no button, nothing yet. However, if I uncomment it and I run it again, you can see now we have a button that says add image and this button is clickable. So again, what this pack does is it places it on the screen. Now I specified here pad Y equals 15. This is a padding. If I clear it and I run it for you, here you can see that the add image button was shoved into the corner. However, if I return the padding, okay. Okay, so I had it highlighted. If I return the padding, you can see there's a small gap between the top bar and the button. So here, this was created using the padding. We use padding just for a stylistic change. So here we want to change stuff, move it around a bit. We give it some padding to create spaces between different widgets. Okay, so now we have created the button, we've packed it, we've placed it on our screen, and it's all inside a frame. Now, the next thing is we're going to create the canvas. The canvas is where we're going to import the image and draw on it. And then this is where we do all our different edits, all on this account of all on this image inside the canvas. All right. To create the canvas, very simple. It will be equal to tk.canvas. Again, this is inside root. So here, if we go back to this, this part right here, so let's go with yellow. This part right here will be the canvas. So the other part of the screen. So this will also be inside root. It's not inside the frame. This will be the other part of the screen. So you can see we called it tk.canvas. It's part of the root and we give it a width and a height. And again, of course, we have to say pack. So if I run this, as you can see, you can see a gray canvas right here. And this is our left frame on the side. So this is what we have so far. We've just set up the basic interface and added our main components. The next thing we want to do is we want to actually start drawing on this canvas. To do so, you're going to need this piece of code right here. So here I said command equal add image. Now, what does this mean? Of course, we had a button. I showed you we had this add image button. And if you click on the button, nothing was happening. This is because this button was not associated with a command. What you, what you really need is to always associate a button with a command. So here I'm saying the command is equal to add image. What this means is that when this button is pressed, it will call a function called add image. Now, where is this function? Obviously, we have to define it ourselves. So let's say def add image. We're going to use the global variable, which is the file path. We say global because we want this variable to be modified throughout our entire program and not just inside this function. So we're going to use the file path and we're going to use this to actually get the path of the image that we're using. So how do we get this image? Now we have the file path. We need to populate it with a real path for a real image. We're going to use something called the file dialog. And this is why we import it right here. So we say from tkinter import file dialog. So here's what we do. We say, file path equals to file dialog dot ask open file name. This means that it will open a dialog where we're going to select a, a, a specific file and this file will be saved in file path. So let's look at this. Let's actually ignore this initial directory for now and let me show you how it works. So if we run it 
and I press on add image, you see it opens up this file dialog. And here I have my different images. So notice one thing. When I specified in the code, initial dir, which means initial directory, this is where the file dialog will be opened. So it was opened here inside this specific path d slash code first slash tkinter image editor slash pictures. This is the path that I myself provided right here in this line of code. Basically, you should set this to be the path of wherever you store your images. This could be your downloads folder. This could be your desktop. This could be your documents folder. This could be any specific folder that you have created. Make sure to set it to a specific folder, write it here, and then when you run it, it will open up this place for the dialogue. Now here, as you can see, there's really nothing happening. If I select this dog, obviously we don't get the image, but what's happening really is that the path of the dog image is being saved here inside file path. So this is how it works. All right, let me stop it. So now we have the path of the image. The next step would be to add this image to our canvas. Now, unfortunately here, there's a few things we need to do. So it's not exactly straightforward, but I'll walk you through it step by step. The first thing we need to do is we need to create an image. Now this image is actually a, a sub-module of the Pillow library. So Pillow, actually before we get there, let me first show you how to install Pillow. So assuming you don't have Pillow installed, you have to just pull up a terminal. So here I'm going to my terminal or you can use your command prompt. And all you need to do is type pip install Pillow. Now I'm not going to run it because I already have Pillow, but this is what you need to do to get Pillow. All right, now that you have pillow, we're going to use image from pillow. So here we say image.open this file path. So now we have a pillow image saved inside our image variable. The next thing we want to do is we want to convert this into an image suitable for a tkinter canvas. So the image you get from pillow is not exactly the same thing as an image that you place in the canvas in tkinter. So what we need to do first is to take this and then put it in the canvas by converting it to something else. But before that, what we need to do is we need to resize it. Now, to resize it, we just do the following. Why do I resize it? The thing is, most images are going to be too big for our UI. So they're going to be too big to fit in our canvas and then Tkinter will not be able to display them. Therefore, I will cut these images by half. So I will scale them by two, meaning I'll scale the width by two and scale the height by two. And then this is how I resize them. After resizing, then I go ahead and put them in the canvas. So as you can see, I say width, height, and this will be equal to int image.width over two and int image.height over two. So I'm basically dividing the width by two and the height by two. After doing that, I simply do image.resize. Now here I specify this, so this variable image.antialias. Now this is something you need to specify in the pillow library. Simply it's related to compression and things like that. Actually not compression, more like sampling. This is just for the resizing method. So don't think too hard about this. You can use different alternatives, but we're going to use antialias for now. All right, now we have our image inside this image variable and it has already been resized. So we need to convert it. Here's what we're going to do. So I say canvas.config width is equal to image.width and height is equal to image.height. What this means is I'm resizing my canvas to actually be exactly equal to my image. Why is that? Some images will actually, actually be smaller than the total size of the canvas. We said our canvas is width 750 and height 600. So we resize, these we resize the canvas to be exactly equal to the image. What if the image was 300 by 300? So we don't want a canvas bigger than the image. We resize it to be exactly equal to the image. All right. Now, after doing this, what we're going to do is we say image is equal to image tk dot photo image. Now image tk, you get, it gets imported here from below as well. So this is how you convert the pillow image to an image suitable for tkinter. So we say image tk dot photo image and we, spec we specify image, we pass it through this function. All right, now we have it converted. The final thing we're going to do is we're actually going to set it to the canvas. So we say canvas dot image is equal to image. And then we say, we call the create image function. Now this function, we use the coordinates zero zero, which means we have to create it in the correct corner or the origin of the canvas, specify the image is equal to our image. 
and finally we anchor it in north and west which means that it will be right in the center all right if i run it now and i say add image and i choose the dog as you can see the image of our dog was loaded right here in the canvas now i can also choose the bird and as you can see the canvas was resized you don't see that gray part anymore it's resized to fit exactly the size of the bird so this is exactly what we wanted. Now what we were able to do is we were able to get an image from our folder, insert it into tkinter, convert it from a pillow image to a tkinter image and add it to the canvas. So one of the hardest parts of our application is done. We were able to load the image. As I said, it's not exactly straightforward. As you can see, it took a few lines of code to get it done, but that part is already done. So now that we've coded the function to add the image, the next thing we're going to work on is actually drawing on top of the image. Now, the first thing we're going to add is this line of code right here. So this line of code here, it says canvas.bind b1 motion to draw. So here what we're saying is that when I do this b1 motion, b1 motion in this case is when you click and you drag. So you know when you're drawing, you would have to, so here even I can show it in paint, if I click and drag, okay, this is a square, but if I actually have just a pencil, if I click and drag, this would draw and it would create a drawing. So this is, we want to achieve the same effect using our canvas and our tkinter application. So we bind the B1 motion to a function called draw. Here we're saying when you click and drag, just go ahead and call the function draw. So where is the function draw? Of course, we have to implement it ourselves. So this is how this function will look like. I'm going to walk you through each line of the code. However, before that, I'm going to demo it because this code is best understood as you're comparing it with the live demo of this code. So let's see if I run it and if I add an image to my canvas, let's say the image of the dog, if I here click and start to drag, as you can see, I'm able to draw on top of the image. So you see, I'm able to draw on the image simply using my mouse. Now, how does this work? How are we able to actually code this part? All right, let's go back to the draw function and compare. Here's what we're doing. We have something called x1, y1, and then x2, y2. So these are obviously coordinates. They look like coordinates. You have two x's and two y's. Why are we using these coordinates? Because of the following. As you can see here, we use canvas.createOval. In fact, when you're drawing here, it's actually just one oval. But when you do this, it's drawing multiple ovals or circles consecutively. This is what gives you the appearance of a line. As you can see here, you can see these separate circles. They're all separated. So this is what drawing is. Basically, we're drawing multiple ovals. Now, to create an oval, you need to give it a starting X and a starting Y, then an ending X and an ending Y, which is X2 and Y2. So now you, you need these four different coordinates. How do we get these? We'll get back to this, but this is what we need to actually create our oval. The next thing we need is a pen color. Now we set this as a default from before, from the starter code even, and the pen color is black. We'll see later how we can change it. And the pen size, we said that it's going to be equal to five, but later on we can change it, of course. So here's what we need to do. An outline is blank. I'll get back to this later on. All right. So we have here X1 and Y1. We say event.x minus pen size and then event.y minus pen size. So what do we mean by event.x? Event.x is actually the mouse event. So let's say if I click here, this will get me the X coordinate of this click and the Y coordinate. So it, get, it will get me the location of my click. Where did you click? I clicked right here. So this will get me the location of my click. Now, later on, what will, what will it do? It will do the same for the Y. So it gets me the X and the Y. And I will do these for both the X one and the Y one. Then I will use my pen size. So my pen size in this case is five. What I do is I simply subtract my pen size from my X and my Y, and then I add them to my X two and Y two. What this means, is that I will actually demonstrate this better using paint. So let's say this is my oval. So here, let's say I clicked here. This will be my event.x and my event.y. This is how I would get the location. 
Then I subtract 5, which is my pen size, to get this point, so the starting point of my oval, and then I add 5 to get this point. So this will be x1, this will be x2, and then this here is the event.x. So here I have to do just a little bit of math to actually get the drawing. Then I do the same thing for the y. So I subtract y and then I add y as well. And this is how I achieve this effect. This is how I'm able to actually draw all of these ovals following my mouse. So it follows my mouse using the event.x and the event.y, does some addition and some subtraction using the pen size to eventually actually get me my drawing. Now, what about the outline? Here I set the outline to be blank. Now by default, the outline for each oval is black, but because I didn't want to stick with a black outline, later on we're going to change the color. So here I left it to be blank, so no outline, just a fill color. Now after drawing, the next thing we're going to do is we're going to learn how to change the color of the pen. So before we were drawing with a black pen, now we're going to try to change the color to be something else. To do so, we're going to use something called a color chooser in Tkinter. So now you see this import right here. I say from Tkinter import color chooser. This is what we need. All right, so how do we get started? We're going to need to create a button. So the button will be called the color button. So color underscore button. I do the same process to create the button as I did for our first button. The parent will be left frame, so it will exist inside our frame right here. Now, it will the text will be change pen color, so this is what we're trying to achieve with this button. The background is white, and the command will take me to change color. Now, we said that command basically is what will happen when this button is clicked. So when I click on the button, take me to the command change underscore color. So let's go ahead and see. This is the function. This is how it will look like. It will be change color. Now, of course, I'm referring to the global variable pen color. This is what we defined at the start and it was black. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to change it. It will be equal to color chooser and we'll see what a color chooser is. Dot ask color and the title is select pen color. So if I run it and let's press on change pen color. So this is the new button that we added. This will open up a color chooser. So this is what a color chooser is. This allows you to select a color using all these different methods. So here you can choose one from here. You can choose one from here. Um, you can just here drag and have any color that you want. So I'm going to just choose this green right here. I'm going to press OK. So if I come here and draw, as you can see, this is how my drawing looks like, and I'm able to draw with the green color. So now we were able to actually change the color using this, this simple line of code, which is opening this color chooser. Now the title here is the title of the window of the color chooser, it's not super important. And now this is how we're able to get the color. After getting the color, the next thing we want to do is we want to change the pen size. We're going to give the pen three different options, a small size, a medium size, and a large size. We're going to assume the current size that we're using, this one, pen size, is actually the size that we already have. So this is going to be medium. This is our size, this is medium. So now we're going to create both a small and a large size. To do so, we're going to create a new frame. Now I'll talk about this frame a bit more. Let's actually go back to, to here, to paint. Now we already have the root widget and we have this frame on the left. Now what I'm going to do is I also have two different buttons. Let me represent them. We have the add image button as well as the select color button. Now, the next thing we're going to do is we're going to add three different radio buttons and you'll see what those are in just a second. But to add them, we're going to create another frame and this frame will be inside the left frame. So going back to the code, as you can see, the parent, so we say tk.frame, the parent will be left frame. So it will be inside left frame and its background will also be white. And of course, we will also do the packing. And you'll see why we need the frame in just a second. What we're going to insert inside the frame are three different radio buttons. So these are a specific type of button in Tkinter. Let me show you what they look like. To insert the first one, I will call it pen size one, and I will just say tk.radio button, and it will be inside the pen size frame. So now here we're talking, these will be inside this one. So inside this one, the text will say small, the value will be three, and the background will be white. So let me actually run this and show you what we have. This is what a radio button is. It's those things that you can usually use to toggle or select. So now I'm selecting the option small. So when we specify the text here, 
the text is equal to small, this is what I did. And the value is equal to 3. So this will represent the pen size, which means the pen size will be equal to 3. So opening this back up, as you can see, here we're actually able to select the pen size. Okay, so we're going to need actually two more of these, the medium and the large. To add them, I just follow the exact same process. I use tk.radio button again. I place it inside the, inside the pen size frame. I give it a text medium, and in this case, a text large. The value for medium will be 5, and the value for large will be 7. And I pack all three of them, running it again. As you can see, now they're all on the same line. Now, had I not used this frame inside the larger frame, they wouldn't be able to be on the same line. They would have to be under each other, which would create more of a messy look. So this is why we chose to go for the, for the frame. Now, as you can see, here, they're, all three of them are selected. We're going to change that in just a second. But anyways, these are our three radio buttons, which will help us select the pen size for our pen. What we want to do is we want to add the function that will actually help us change the size of this pen. To do so, we're also going to use the command. So in this case, we say command equal lambda change size 3. And I'll explain this whole lambda stuff in just a second. But here we go. I do this for the other two. So for pen size 2 as well as pen size 3. All right. So now what do I want to do? Basically, based on the pen size, based on which one was selected, whether it was the small, the medium, or the large, I will go ahead and call a function called change sides. So let's actually create this function. This function is super straightforward, super easy. It uses the global, which is pen size, which is this one right here, and then it just changes it to whatever is passed inside this function. So in the case of small, we will pass the value 3, and then in the case of medium, we pass the value 5, and in the case of uh, large, we pass the value 7. Now, why do I have this lambda stuff right here? This is necessary if you need to pass an argument to your function. As we saw before here when we had command change color or command add image, we didn't have the lambda. This is because there was no argument necessary to be passed to this function. They didn't have any arguments. However, because the change color has sorry, the change size has an argument, unlike this one where it doesn't, because it has it, we have to specify that this is a lambda. So now if we rerun it, let's see what we have. Let's actually press on medium. So now we have our normal pen. Now if I press on small, we have the small pen. And if I press on large, we have the large pen. Of course, I can also change the color and it will also be the same. Okay, now as you can see, I'm able to draw on the canvas without even inserting the image. It's not really necessary to have an image for you to draw on a canvas in Tkinter. Just thought I'd let you know that. All right, now one thing you could have noticed is when we run it, usually both the medium and the large are selected for some reason. So I'm just going to go ahead and change this by specifying that the medium one should be selected. So if I say pen size 2, which is the medium one, dot select, this will make it so that only the medium is selected upon launch, which makes it much simpler. So now there's no error, no sort of bug going on in our code. All right, so we were able to change both the pen color and the pen size which means now we can actually draw whatever we want. If I add an image, let me add the dog again. As you can see, we can draw on the image. All right, perfect. Now, let's say we just added some drawings onto an image. The next thing we want to do is the ability to actually clear those drawings and erase them from the image. Now to do so, we're going to add a new button. This button will be the clear button. So it will look like this. It will, have a, it will be inside the left frame, the text will be clear, and the background will not be white this time, it will actually be this sort of reddish color to indicate that this is a clear or a, an action that will result in something negative, which is to erase all of the drawings. And of course, it's going to call the command clear canvas when we click it. Again, we pack it, which means we actually place it inside the UI. Now let's see what clear canvas looks like. So we define the function clear canvas, and then simply all we need to do is canvas.delete all. Now let's run it and actually test it out. We add the image, let's add the image of the bird. And now let's draw something. So if I want uh, this color and I just draw something here. So now I have my drawing. If I press on the clear button, as you can see, everything goes away. So both the image as well as the drawings. Now to keep the image, simply all you need to do is the following. You just say canvas.createImage again, and then you will pass the same image it had before 
into this create image. So you, you, do, you do delete everything, but then you bring back the image by calling create image again. So now running it, let's add the image of the bird. Let's color it up here. And then if we press on clear, as you can see, only the drawings disappear, but the bird itself actually stays there. All right. Now we have the clear functionality. The last thing we want to do is we want to be able to add these filters to our images, just as I showed you at the start of the video. Now to do so, we're going to be using the pillow library. We're going to use both image ops and image filter to perform these different actions on the image. Now, first, we actually need to create something called a combo box or a drop down menu. Let me show you how this gets created. So first I create a label. So this label will just indicate to the user what this dropdown should do. So let me actually run it and show you here. It's just some text. It says select filter under it. We will have a dropdown menu. So the label is very simple to create. You just use tk.label. It's inside label frame. So this is the same thing that we're doing all the time. So we're placing all of our widgets inside this label frame inside this, sorry, left frame. And then I say the text for it is select filter and the background is white. And of course I pack it just to place it inside my UI. Now we want to actually create the dropdown menu. To create the dropdown menu, we need to use something called a combo box in Tkinter. So the combo box is created using this line of code. So ttk.combo box. Now here notice that this is not TK, this is TTK. And if you go back to the imports, here we have from Tkinter import TTK. So TTK actually stands for themed Tkinter. So these are a set of themed widgets in Tkinter. Unfortunately, combo box is not available inside the original TK module. It's only available inside the TTK sub module. Therefore, we actually need to use TTK to import the combo box. Anyways, as you can see here, we've created the combo box. We set ttk.combo box. We place it inside the frame as usual, and we specified these values. So black and white, blur, emboss, sharpen, and smooth. Of course, we pack it. Let's run it and see what we have. As you can see, now we have this drop down menu, and you can select any one of these different options. So blur, black and white smooth, sharpen, and so on. Now, nothing is really happening because we haven't written the code for it, but now we have the basis. Now we have the widget. So what we're going to do is as usual, we will write a function that will get triggered by this widget. And let's see what this function will do to actually modify our images. Okay. So to add a function, to get this function to be triggered by us changing the value of the combo box or changing the selected item from the combo box, we need to do the following. We say filter underscore combo box dot bind combo selected, which means this is the action that we have. We're selecting something from the combo box. So combo box selected, we will apply this Lambda. So we say Lambda event apply underscore filter, and then we will use the filter filter combo box dot get. So I'll explain what this is in just a second, but the function itself that we want to call is apply filter. So apply filter. Let's see what this function will contain and how it will work. So we go here. This is where we define the apply filter function. It takes one argument, which is the filter. So black and white or emboss or sharpen or whatever filter we decide to choose. So what will the function actually contain? We will actually need to reopen the image itself. Remember when we first talked about converting the image from a pillow image to a Tkinter image? Well, we will need to actually retrieve the pillow image itself. So we cannot use the Tkinter image for this because we're using pillow. So to retrieve the pillow image, we just need to open the image again. So we repeat this. We use the file path, which is already a global variable that we're using. We use image.open to open the image. So after opening the image, it will get saved in this variable. We scale it by two again, because this is what we did the first time and we do the resizing. So this is just repeating what we did at the start of the video when we first opened the image. Now, after doing this, we just say, if the filter is black and white, I modify the image, I make it black and white. And after that, I simply place it on my canvas. And this is how we do it. So we say image is equal to image TK dot photo image. And then we do the whole canvas dot image and canvas dot create image all over again. So this is very similar to our very first function, the add image function. So I explained that over there. Basically, we repeat the exact same steps. And this is the new part. The new part being if filter equal black and white, just simply change it to grayscale. Let's test it out before I walk you through the code again. So running it, let's say add image and we add the image of the dog. 
Now I'm going to select the filter black and white. And as you can see, it converted my image into black and white. So let's go back to the code, talk a bit about how it's working and let me explain all the hidden details. So going back here, when we actually did the binding between the combo box and this Lambda event or this function, we said apply filter and then we passed this value as an argument. Now going back to our apply filter function, you can see the argument it takes is actually the filter value, meaning here the value is black and white. So what do I mean by filter combo box dot get? This means it will pass whatever value is inside here. So let's say if I select blur, obviously nothing is going to happen now. You see the image is back to the exact same. There's no blurring because we haven't coded it yet. But what it will pass is simply the keyword blur. So it will take blur and pass it to this apply filter function. So apply filter can actually put the blur filter on top of it. Again, if I press um, emboss, what it will do is it will simply pass emboss. So what's happening here when I select black and white is it's passing filter.combobox.get, which in this case is black and white, into this apply filter function. And then we have this if statement that if it's black and white, we will use image ops, which is image operations using pillow. So the library pillow for image processing dot grayscale image. So we convert our image to grayscale and this is how we get it in black and white. Now there are different things we can do. So we can have the filter is equal to blur. In this case, we don't use image ops. We actually use something called the image filter. So you see image filter dot blur. So we say image dot filter image filter dot blur. This will actually blur our image. So these can all be found inside the documentation of pillow. There are plenty of options. I chose to go with these five because they're pretty generic, pretty popular, and they're easy to demo. So the others we have are sharpened, smooth and embossed. And in, case, in each case, we will use the image filter. Now let's test it out. Let's stop running and rerun. Let's add the image. If we add the image of the dog, let's select the filter black and white. Blur will, uh, I selected emboss, which caused the emboss. Blur will actually blur the image. Sharpen will sharpen the image. You can see now it's extremely detailed and smooth will actually remove some details. So smooth will make it slightly blurry. So now we have added all the filters to our application. So that is really it for this video. Now in this video, we were able to build this image drawing tool or image editing tool using Tkinter and Pillow and Python. We were able to build this tool, add images, change the pen color and the pen size to actually draw on this image, have different annotations, clear the drawings, as well as select different filters and change different things. So we have the blur, the black and white and the emboss. So thank you so much again for watching. I really hope you enjoyed this video. Please leave a like if you did and I'll see you in the next one. Bye bye.